Oh, crap. Sorry, guys. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Sorry about that. I've been talking this whole time. You guys didn't hear me? Oh, man. Ah, oh, crap. Okay. So, sorry, let me, let me turn off my, uh, my squawk here is a little loud. Okay. So let me go ahead and redo what I was saying. Okay. Uh, re-say what I was saying. Okay. So first of all, I wanted to say, um, <laughs> uh, the dollar yen, I, I was trading a little bit earlier and I, I apologize for not, um, being able to be with you earlier this morning on the face webinar. Uh, what happened is, uh, I was, long dollar yen see this look like a double bottom here so i was long a little dollar yen right here around the uh, 10970 something and then um we started to roll over and this is while i was on the face webinar i i closed out my short or my long took a little bit of a loss but i turned around and went short and i think when i came back on and steve was talking i'm like hey i'm short the dollar yen um, then I closed it down. I closed it out when we were down here in the twenties. And so I made pretty good money. I lost a little bit here, made some pretty good money. And then when we rallied past this, um, this trend line earlier this morning, uh, I got long down here and somewhere in the seventies and I sold it like, you know, above one Oh six, like one Oh I think I bought it at one Oh six ninety or one Oh five ninety. And I sold it at one Oh seven twenty five or something like that. So I, I made a pretty good, pretty good amount there. Um, but you know, as I was mentioning to you, when the, when the volume was off, I, I'm looking at the dollar yen right now and I don't know what to do. I, I don't have a plan. I don't, I, I look at it and I'm like, uh, I, I don't know what to do. But what I was also explaining to you guys is if you used Forex analytics, uh, going into the weekend, we had an AB equals CD move and we were squeezing right into Friday or above 108. Hopefully nobody went long. Um, you know, holding the dollar yen over the weekend because, you know, we had already completed the pattern and we ran up into this resistance zone. But now I was explaining that the dollar yen's being pulled in a couple of different areas or a couple of different ways. Uh, we've got the equity markets that have bounced off the lows, but we also are dealing with yields and the yields also bounced off the lows as well. And they've recovered a bit, but with stocks still trading heavy, Yields are starting to come off. Dollar yen starting to come off. So again, I'm I'm not really too sure what to do with the dollar yen, and and also uh, I, I wanted to explain that you know with the euro dollar, I really don't know what to do here either. I, I want to be short the euro, ultimately, but because I do think that all the short squeezing for the most part is done. But if stocks recover, the euro dollar could possibly recover a little bit as well. So uh, knowing that the euro dollar stopped at the 618 retracement over the weekend, you know, stopped right here, I, I'm, I don't know what to do with it at this point. And so, and it's okay. I, I'm, I, I've, I, for me personally, I've made a little bit of money this morning scalping around the dollar yen. It's okay for me to not be trading. Uh, I know some of you guys are like, well, I, I just want to, you know, I want to be able to make some money here. And I get that, but when the markets are not giving us good signals, it's okay to, to, to be sidelined. I want to explain to you guys that the market, the volatility in the market is, you know, is running high and that's good. I don't expect that to abate anytime in the near future. This is the difference between the market we're in today versus the market we were in one month ago, one month ago, uh, you know, here, let me pull up, um, uh, here we go. Uh, Euro, US dollar. Actually, let's do it this way. US dollar, Japanese yen, implied volatility. Uh, let's just do one month implied volatility. Let's look at the chart. Um, this, I mean, this, this right here is going to show you the difference between the market we're in today versus the market we're in, you know, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let's go weekly, uh, let's go daily, five year. This is good. Okay, this shows you the difference between the market we're in today versus the market we're in a month ago. Volatility, I expect it to stay elevated. N maybe not where we're at right now, but we're gonna stay you know, probably above 10 for the foreseeable future, guys. So because of that, um, be because of that, you have to, be able to 
sit on the sidelines on a day like today when the markets are really choppy and say, all right, uh, I don't see it. I have no clarity right now. It's okay. It's okay to have no clarity. There are going to be patterns that are going to develop. There are going to be opportunities that develop. Uh, one of the, one of the, one of the trades that I'm looking at right now, and I'm not, um, I'm not in right at this moment in time, but I am, I'm really watching the U S dollar Norwegian Krona. I think this move is probably done, overdone. Uh, I want to be short the US dollar Norwegian krona. I can't short it though, or maybe even short the Euro Norwegian krona. I can't short it or be long Norwegian kronas when the equity markets are so under pressure. If I get the all clear that the stock market's going to bounce and we're going to get, you know, more of a significant type of, you know, one to two day rally. I would be more inclined to shorting the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona, but this is like one of those. It's on my radar. Same with the U.S. dollar Mexican peso. I'd love to short this thing. Might have to wait till we get to like one twenty three and a half or one twenty five, realistically. But I, I, I really still want to be short the U.S. dollar Mexican peso. I don't think today is the day, though. Not at least not right now, based on what I'm seeing. I tried shorting. By the way, I did try. This is. You want to see how good I am? This is, I'm going to show you how good I am. I was short the US dollar Mexican peso right here at 2274. Sitting here, sitting here, right here, I'll show you. 2274, right here. No, 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 right here, right here, 74. I was short and I'm like, I'm going to short some uh, US dollar Mexican peso. I told everybody in our you know chat room, I'm shorting some. And I sat in it for like four, like three or four minutes. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I shorted it here. It, it, it went down a little bit because I was in it for about 15 minutes. It went down a little bit, came back to my break-even point. I'm like, ah, uh, I'm just going to flatten it. So I flat, I flat, I, I actually took like, you know, basically covered my commissions. I flatted it. Literally the moment I flat it, I look, I look, I look away and I look back and this thing goes into free fall. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how good I am. I got out of my short right there, right there, right, right there. That's about when I got out of my short. That's how awesome I am today. So, uh, you know, it, it's, but it's okay, you know, to, to know what you want to do and how you want to do it. And like the dollar Mexican peso, look, I want to short it. I tried to short it today. Didn't make anything. Could have made some pretty good money, but whatever. Um, but that's kind of a setup that I'm looking at too. Let's take a real quick look at the S&P. So the S&P, this was from Friday, okay. So the S&P, it is trading heavy. Keep in mind, we are at a 38% retracement. This is the 38% retracement long-term, long-term retracement. While we're above like 2,400, you have to be real careful being on the short side. I actually think we're gonna break down. Do I think it's gonna happen today? No, not necessarily. I mean, it might. I mean, there's a lot of panic out there. Um, you know, I think when when the United States goes in a full, you know, two week closure, uh, I think that's probably the time that the stock market's probably going to hit the bottom. And you know, once we get to that point, I, we're not quite at that point yet. I don't think not with our administration currently, but um, I think at that point. You know, we sell off, maybe hit, you know, 2000 or something, so, you know, maybe the lower end of this previous megaphone, and then we bounce. Uh, look, I, I'm looking for a place to buy the S&P for a bounce. I don't think it's here just yet. Uh, let's take a real quick look at gold. So if you guys, um, one last thing I want to go over really quick with gold. Um, uh, uh, is I picked it up this morning. If you guys are not a Forex Analytics subscriber, uh, this is uh, uh, from this morning. I picked up uh, gold at four. Personally, I picked it up at fourteen sixty-seven or something like that. Sixty-seven at the upper end of this band. Uh, I exited it at uh, at um, above fifteen hundred. So, why did I buy gold? Well, a couple reasons. 
we retested these lows. I actually thought we'd hit the uh, 1430 level, which is 161% uh, extension. I thought we would hit that first, but j the reason why I started buying it is just in case we didn't, you know, which that's what happened today. We, you know, we hit, we were, I thought we we're going to the 161% extension of this move. Uh, I thought we were going to retest these lows and possibly break through these lows, just trigger a couple of stops and then bounce. But I started picking gold up as a result. Um, and I picked it up near the bottom, picked it up like right here, like right here, sold it into the strength. And then now I'm not trading, now I'm not in gold, but I do think that gold um, is a value play at these levels as long as fear remains in the equity market. So, um, and, and if, if, if you've been chatting with me in the chat room, you guys know that I've, you know, I've been looking to be long gold and being long gold today was the right play. Now that I'm out, I'm wondering if I got out prematurely, probably did. I tend to be, I tend to do that. But um, if I get an opportunity to buy gold again, I'm going to probably buy it something like this, you know, somewhere down here. If we don't, if we don't hit a new low, then I'll be picking up gold again. So that's how I'm viewing gold at the moment. And uh, like I said, guys and gals, it is extremely, extremely, extremely volatile there or there you know, here in the markets. Please trade safe, uh, take smaller positions. Um, we, we're, we're, uh, at Forex Analytics, we're putting together an offer for you guys because we've had a lot of uh, people come to Forex Analytics because uh, they, you know, having a community of people to trade with is much better than trying to do this on your own, especially when there's so much volatility because, you, you know, in the chat rooms, you get all, you know, we're, we're constantly passing around news and setups and what we're you know, talking about and, you know, charts that we're looking at. Um, so we've seen an influx of people come into Forex Analytics, but what we, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to put together a, a, a special package for um, some of you guys that would like to, uh, you know, come into our community uh, at a at a discounted price. So anyway, just be on the lookout look out for that. Um, but I want to thank you guys for being here today. I hope you have a uh, a wonderful day. Remember, it's okay not to be in positions right now. Things are choppy. Things are not. They're very fluid. They're very choppy, and it's not very clear. So. Um, you know, just, just trade safely out there. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a great one. Good luck. Uh, I will see you guys in the very near future tomorrow morning on the face webinar. Thanks everyone.